police violence, surveillance, and suppression of peaceful protest. And this pattern has been disproportionately unleashed on organic social movements that support life and human rights for Palestinians in the face of the genocidal assault by Israel. Over the past nine months, we've seen a disturbing, one-sided police approach that reveals extreme bias and targets Palestinians and pro-Palestinian community members in a blatant show of anti-Palestinian racism. On Friday, May 31st, Vancouver residents and community members, shaken by the recent news of Israeli airstrikes on Rafah, where over one million Palestinians were told to gather in humanitarian safe spaces, but were then targeted and burned alive, gathered to blockade the rail tracks in East Vancouver, an act of escalation and protest in light of disturbing news, and to demand an immediate two-way sanction, uh, arms embargo and sanctions on Israel. Our community members laid 303 sets of children's clothes on the train tracks to mourn the deaths of over 15,000 children in Gaza. Indigenous elders lit a sacred fire, sending prayers to the people of Palestine. Several dozen police officers were deployed to violently disperse the over 100 pro-Palestinian elders, students, parents, and community members present. Police charged and attacked the blockade. People were kicked, punched, choked and pepper sprayed. A pregnant woman was punched in the stomach after she told the police that she was pregnant. Another person was strangled. After the police had violently cleared the blockade, officers continued to assault and arrest people dispersing from the sidewalk. Dozens of pro-Palestinian community members were left with injuries and 14 arrests were made, including bystanders who had gathered to witness. The blockade on the 31st was part of escalated actions around the world demanding an end to the genocide. Israel has murdered over 36,000 Palestinians in Gaza. Estimations of the true death toll exceed 200,000 in the last nine months. They have deliberately targeted hospitals, residential buildings, schools, refugee camps, and places of faith in Gaza, and our community members cannot stand by. These acts of police violence have been echoed elsewhere in the country, particularly in Toronto, where investigative reporting is now showing high levels of surveillance of community organizers and links, including an intelligence sharing model between police response to pro-Palestinian activity and CSIS. Now in the wake of such a disturbing episode of violence in our communities, we must ask ourselves, how was such extreme police violence warranted? What is the responsible framing of such violence? The police response over the last several months has been laced with anti-Palestinian racism and a biased approach. So now let's hear from our community members who were present at these police attacks and can offer perspective. First up, I'd like to invite Amanda Dominguez. Amanda is a pro-Palestinian community member and organizer with Parents for Palestine, a, a group that operates across the Lower Mainland and North Shore for Palestine. 